I have the great pleasure now in presenting the next speaker, who is Maria Updato. She's a registered midwife since 2016. After working for two years in her home country of Italy, she moved to Ireland, where she started working at the Coombs Women and Infants University Hospital. She's always had an interest in clinical research and advanced practice, and for that reason decided to undertake her master's degree in midwifery practice and leadership, which she completed in 2020 at Trinity College in Dublin. So I'm going to switch over and give her presentation rights. Feel free to write your comments in the chat box. Otherwise, we comments um, will ask for questions at the end of her presentation. Over to you. Good morning, good evening, or wherever you are at the moment to everybody. Happy International Day to everybody, and thanks, Liz, for introducing me. I'm just going to switch off my camera just for um, just for internet issue, but I just wanted to welcome everybody and thank you for having me here today. So the topic that we're going to talk about today is women experience of water immersion during childbirth and in a hospital setting in Ireland. And this is a qualitative study that I undertake it for my master's degree. So um, really, the, the first thing to look at is the evidence around water birth. And should we start with two questions, which are why should low risk women opt for water birth and why should maternity units facilitate water birth? So we know that research on the use of hydrotherapy in maternity setting has been ongoing since 1916 and is still ongoing. But why? Childbirth experience can largely impact on the future health of women and of well-being of women and children and families. And from users' point of view, uh, water immersion during childbirth is associated with a sense of control, autonomy, empowerment, privacy, and an overall positive childbirth experience. Obviously, all of that can lead to women's well-being, increase the bonding and the self-esteem that we know are fundamental indicators of quality of maternity care. From the organization point of view as well, water immersion, it's a safe care option for low-risk women because it's a natural pain relief. And of course, increased mobility, it reduced the need for pharmacologic and pain relief, increased the chance to have a normal burn and a birth and to reduce the risk of intervention. It also facilitates skin to skin contact and increased the breastfeeding. So it's also potentially cost effective care option that can be implemented in the countries to reduce intervention, to give more option to women, and especially in Ireland to implement the national maternity strategy that was released in 2000. 2016. So let's look a little bit in, at the background and what's the situation at the moment in the Republic of Ireland in regards of water birth. So um, water birth and water immersion and the use of birthing pools, uh, birthing pools are an established care option for labouring women in many countries. Let's look at the UK, for example, where more than three quarters of maternity units facilitate water births. In Ireland, the situation is a little bit more complicated, and this can be uh, associated with a tragic event that uh, occurred in 2006, where um, um, a tragic death of a baby occurred after a, after a water birth. So the HSC imposed a ban on water birth um, that was actually removed in 2009. But uh, regardless, uh, the, the ban was lifted. The, in, it's been very difficult to kind of recover from this um, initial ban and this recovery remains very difficult um, nowadays. Moreover, the medical model of care is still the predominant one in Ireland and uh, um, uh, only seven of Ireland's 19 maternity units have a pool in place and only one of these facilitate water births. So you can see how difficult has been the recovery from this ban. Regardless, the predominant um, consultant model of care anyway, um, the HSC uh, published in 2016 the National Maternity Strategy, which is a document that was published to place increased emphasis on promoting physiological birth by offering women choices during labour and birth, including birth in age, such as birth in pool, for example. So, given that um, this um, relative limited use of birth impulse in Ireland, and also there's no really uh, study that look at women experience of water immersion 
in Ireland, but even worldwide, there's a lack of information on the quality, qualitative aspect of the research. It was considered timely and critical to explore women's experience of, water, uh, of using water immersion during childbirth in the con context of the Irish maternity um, setting and care. Women experience of this care option in the context of the of the current availability and use in Ireland, it was expected to give a greater understanding from women perspective that could actually inform policies and inform practice. And that's why um, I decided to continue with this topic and to uh, look at women experiences of water immersion during labour and childbirth in a hospital setting in Ireland. So let's look a little bit at the methodology. Um, given that the purpose of the study was to investigate women's experience of, of experience of water immersion during uh, childbirth, and so together uh, like a better understanding of the process, um, it was uh, a qualitative descriptive approach was um, the the, method, the the study design that was um, considered appropriate. Uh, the sample um, were nine women, low risk women that gave birth in water between 2019. Uh, Sister, did you come with patients? Sister, Paris, did you come with patients? They came with a, a van. A bus. Hey, she's around. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so um, the sample was nine low risk women who gave birth in between February 2019 and November 2019 in the Combe Hospital. So the study population were women who gave birth in water within 12 months previously, uh, pre prior to the study. And the Combe Hospital is a study site that was, um, uh, there is a, a center that provides care to 8,000 um, women per year. Data was collected by semi-structured interviews with open-ended questions and interviews were conducted between February 2020 and March 2020. Um, because obviously uh, the COVID happened and the strict rules, I had to stop the interviews, but the sample was considered enough anyway for the data that I gathered at the time. Data were analyzed by using inductive thematic analysis. I use a software that is in vivo to store, classify and code the data the data were um, this, um, transcribed were verbatim all the information and all the um, um, all the interviews were transcribed verbatim and from there coded and then three main teams and sub team were identified this was the whole process and the three sub themes so water birth keep it normal in a hospital setting which include two um, sub themes which are trust in the body and intimate experience and the gentle transition and then the second theme which is intimate experience and the third theme which is an unknown underestimated resource so let's look a little bit at the sample characteristic. If you can see, as you can see here, six women out of nine were Irish women. Three of them were um, European, one Spanish, Lithuanian and Scottish. And from, um, uh, from the sample, 33% of them were multiverse and 67% were nulliverse. So the first theme is water birth, keep it normal in a hospital setting. This theme encapsulates the women perception and describe the women perception of giving birth in a natural way, even, in a, even though in a hospital setting. As you can read here, women describe water immersion as the best thing ever, no guts, no nothing, the best thing ever, relaxation. And relaxation, in fact, was uh, the high level of relaxation was one of the main topic that raised from all women uh, stories, and this helped them to naturally cope with the pain. Um, as well, being active was central for the management of the pain in relation to women's satisfaction with the experience as well. All the multiple spontaneously compared their water births with epidural, for example, describing water births as more natural and satisfied because they could be in control and because they could be active. They were actually leading their experience. Also, the second stage, um, the majority of the women describe it as quick and easy. They were able to follow their instinct that they had the perception to avoid of being cut, of having an unnecessary intervention. 
Overall, women describe this experience as amazing, lovely, unbelievable, life-changing and wonderful because your experience to give birth to your baby. Two negative aspects also raised. One was the tight space that can obviously um, depend from obviously uh, the even the BMI of the woman or also the fact that we just have one pool in place and we can give more option to the women and also to be rushed out of the pool. This one also can be linked to the fact that the pool is um, in the delivery suite of this big maternity center that provides care to 8,000 women. So it's not like a midwifery led um, alongside unit. Uh, so the workload is continuously like the same. So that was probably the reason why. And all women indicated overall that the word for, um, they would hope for a water birth in the future. And they use phrases like, for example, would not change a thing, cannot imagine being in any other place. And after this experience, I would only want the pool. The first sub, sub team is, um, Trusting the body and empowering experience. All women reported that being the water heightening their experience of being in control of their body. Um, perception of being charged was enhanced by different aspects, primarily by not using medication for pain management. All women linked not using medication with the perception of being empowered as they were able to give birth without any help. They use phrases, for example, as being privileged to be a woman and you know what to do even though nobody tell you. Um, this suggests obviously that water birth can have an impact of women's perception of self-affirmation that is a very important indicator of the quality of maternity care as we saw at the beginning of this presentation. Another important aspect that influences women's perception of being in control of and, and feeling empowered was the hands of care that they received. Women reported that midwives give them the belief that they could actually do that without any issue and stated that being the water helped them avoid unnecessary intervention. The second sub-team is the gentle transition. Women described giving birth uh, in the pool as a non-traumatic experience for them, but also for their baby. They all see the, the birth of their baby as a peaceful way to give birth to the baby. And um, yeah, all the birds, um, in all the birds, the baby was free to flow out and flow up into the water. And this was described as a precious moment for them also to realize what was happening and to look at the baby swimming into the pool was a very relaxing and very stress-free way of um, seeing the baby being born. The second team is an intimate experience. So this team encapsulate women's perception of having a private and intimate experience. Being covered by the water made them feel safe and comfortable and also very much less exposed. Um, and this was quite crucial because all women reported having a perception of being in their own space, which was also described as one of the reasons why they decided to opt for water birth. For example, one of the women that was uh, one of the women that was interviewed, she was suffering of hemorrhoids and varicose veins that she and she reported that being covered by the water gave her a sense of dignity instead of being exposed um, uh, to everybody. Most of the women talk about their satisfaction with the care and the care that they received also um, in relation of the um, midwifery care that they received. Um, women described midwives to be very discreet with them and they all appreciated the fact that the body was really encroaching their space. And this enhanced their perception of feeling in a private and a home-like space. Also, another important um, pa aspect was the partner role. Getting the partner prepared for the labor for the labor was a was a very uh, recurrent theme and aspect. Um, all women reported how highly uh, they valued the fact that the, the partner was playing an active role in their birth. They said that the partner were more involved in the decision making, even during the pregnancies. They um, couldn't make without the partner getting the environment ready and they felt very protected and safe because they had the partner right in front of them looking in the eyes instead of turning the head while they were in the bed. 
Um, also, the partner had the chance to start bonding with the newborns because, for example, as you can read here, when baby came out, he picked up the baby up and uh, put the baby on my chest. So the partner in some of the uh, stories was also the first person um, uh, catching the baby. The third and the last team is an, under, an, an unknown underestimated research, uh, resource. This team encapsulate the lack of information and, and the access that all the women mentioned in regards of water births in Ireland. So if we look a little bit at the numbers, two women out of nine directly were directly informed by this care option in the hospital. Um, most of the women decided to um, have a water birth because they they were informed, they educated themselves or because somebody has experiences. Also six women uh, considered water birth to achieve a normal birth and all the nulliparous, all the multiparous considered water birth because they had a traumatic experience. So really as a healing experience for them now. Women felt that they did not receive the right information and they would feel very anxious, worried and very lucky that they actually made it to achieve a water birth. And this is one of the uh, phrases that one of the women said, um, you shouldn't have to fight to have a water birth or whatever kind of birth you want. I would choose the comb poorly for the pool. I'd be open to consider home birth to guarantee to have a water birth. And these women actually had a home birth with the second baby and she had a pool birth at home. So strength and limit limitation, just to conclude. Strength, we are providing new knowledge on water births in the Harish context from women's point of view. And this is the first study that is looking at this. And we, and this can inform policies and improve midwifery practice. Limitation wise, we're considering this, uh, considering the time frame chosen uh, for the study, recall cannot be excluded. As I said, women were interviewed between the 12 months prior the, uh, after their birth experience. So this can be, um, a, um, it's a limitation for the study. And then the voluntary sampling. So women with positive water experience might have decided to um, attend the study and participate to the study, but women that did not have a good uh, experience that probably did, didn't decide to, uh, didn't want to participate. So to conclude, water can promote prom positive empowering birth experience to women, led to a shift of focus from high risk to low risk midwifery can, which contributes to a reduction of necessary intervention, even in a high medicalized hospital setting, preserve physiological process of birth, even in a high medicalized settings in, and in Irish uh, maternity hospital. And, and and to ensure that obviously water birth is a valuable realistic option for women in Ireland, we should engage and educate more regarding water births. Thank you everybody for listening and for being here today. Thank you very much. And I think that last quote is, is very apt that birth is not only about making the babies, it's about making mothers who are strong, competent, capable, who trust themselves and know their inner strength, which after birthing, they most certainly do. Just gonna take presentation back from you. So this now comes to question time. So we've got comments on here first. So let's go back to that slide because it's prettier to look at. Um, Catherine has written here that she loves your accompanying um, pictorials so your pictures are beautiful throughout your presentation thank you so much this actually is a woman that was included in the study this last picture here oh that's brilliant yes yes and that's and the I, that's the pool yes so um, that's I, the, sorry go for it no no, no. The, when we were looking at for example the um, the tight space the negative aspect is as you can see this pool is quite long because it's the only put pool that is present in the hospital and we don't have different options and option and size for example as you can see this might have been like obviously a negative aspect and that's the pool that we were talking about and that's one of the women that attended and that had uh water birth so is that steps at the front of her that she can climb in and out of say it again sorry are those the steps of the pool oh, in front of her Yes, yes, the steps are beside, like on the side, there is um, 
uh, some movement and some uh, position that we would explain or uh, midwives are trained on how to get the woman out of the pool quickly if it needed but the stairs on are on the side there is actually a pole there is on the side of the pool where the woman can hold herself and then she can step out of the pool by using this little stair oh actually, and i i apologize for mispronouncing people's names but big arm has in Turkey only a maximum of seven or eight public hospitals have water birth units. If you want water birthing, you can take this service from private hospital and sadly costs a lot of money. And I think that's the same almost everywhere. If a woman has money, she can have less pain. She has more choice. Um, Megan Cooper's giving you hands up and applause. Jane's agreeing with what um, Bigham has said. Um, Diane, thank you so much for sharing your research. It is uplifting, bravo. Um, Catherine has asked, how expensive is it to set up a water birthing unit in dollars or sterlings? I don't really know about dollars and standards, sterling or to, to set up a birthing, to set up a birthing unit. Um, it is quite expensive, but the problem in Ireland is not more about the money, it's about the the model of care, the predominant one, there is still a shared care between GP and the consultant and the hospital. So the reason mainly is not because there is a lack of money or there is no money to invest on that, but it's because obviously the, it's a very medicalized uh, maternity care at the time, at, at this moment. Uh, we still didn't uh, step out of the all the induction uh, induction of labors process and stuff like this. There's uh, women usually go to consultant instead of going to midwives. So we're we're making step by step. There is a few midwifery led units in Ireland. Unfortunately, there is none in in Dublin. Um, probably in the not very far future. Even Ireland will have the possibility to have a, a midwifery led unit, but um, I, I don't know how much could be in dollars or sterling. But definitely, um, it's not the it's not a money issue here in Ireland. You change the system before you can think about that. But that, as Jane has put her comment as well, it's about integration of normal and how we kind of go about that. Um, Megan has written in excellent work confirms so much of the research we've already done. I would love to work with you as the challenges you mentioned are common across the globe. Megan's currently working with uh, the, I agree, absolutely amazing Claire Freely on a scoping review that looks at facilitators and challenges in more depth, um, so much work to do. Um, Bogum, Turkey's minimum wage is 4,250 lira and water birth starts at 2,000 lira. Yeah, and this is when we look at social justice and the importance of social justice to midwifery care and to making sure people have the options, all options, and it's not just about um, money. Almost a conversation happening down here. Um, Jane Houston, another person for you to connect up with, um, Maripa, she did her doctorate in water immersion. So as long as you get the buy-in, it's simple, but need motivated people. Uh, lots of chats are going to happen offline, I think, by the looks of this. And Megan, from the Australian perspective, two two and a half to three thousand dollars to get started using a portable pool, um, and then you've got to do your occupational health and safety and draining um, after that. Does anyone else want to ask any other questions? Either ask them verbally or type in other questions. I was going to ask one while people are thinking about what has changed in Ireland, but you've kind of answered that. That it's well. Has, First of all, yeah, well, it's been complicated, especially after the COVID. So it was already complicated to um, have water birth starting in Ireland. Um, it was needed a, a quantitative study that was actually carried out from one of the assistant director of midwifery in the Comb Hospital that published one study on um, just in 2020 uh, comparing outcomes between standard care and water birth. This actually gave the possibility to the hospital because there was a study uh, going on to start with water births. From there, um, actually things didn't really change too much, but that's because um, the COVID then it. So because of the COVID and because it's not a, like a, an established care option in Ireland, 
um, all most of the hospital decided just to stop water birds and well the comb stopped the water birds first of all because there was no staff and we had a very high waves uh, of obviously um, women hospitalized for COVID so the staff level wasn't enough to even uh, look after women yeah. in, in water and because we didn't know anything about also um, from a perspective of um, hygiene and how to you know sharing the virus by using the pool and stuff like this uh, so they stopped and they actually start again water birds have started again in march the problem is that they have been stopped for two years almost so that's that's very <laughs> it wasn't very good aspect but the thing is that there is actually a new unit that in, that put the play uh, put the pool in place which is the rotunda hospital which is the other big maternity units in, in the in the in dublin so the hospital are starting slowly starting to provide this care option to women even though it's not established care option quite yet and we do need a lot of um work from midwives point of view that they don't feel enough confident and comfortable in assisting women giving birth in the water but also from medical point of view because doctors are not really involved in this care option and they should in terms of being not because they need to to be present obviously if it's a low risk women we're talking about but because they need to be aware that this is a care option that is safe for women low risk and these and they need to provide information to women that attended their clinic for example so you know there is a little bit of work to do still uh, as you can said before as you said before mentality first but um slowly we can see a little bit of uh, progress from this point of view. COVID has a lot to answer for. Yes. Um, Jane, do you want to ask your questions using your microphone or do you want to type your questions? You've got a question about sample and midwifery education on water immersion. Why did uh, you yes. ask? Right. Um, is it okay if I use the microphone? Absolutely, go for it, Jane. As I was called in the last session, I'm an aged midwife, so my typing is rather slow. So, um, yeah, my question, I mean, it, it's, it seems self-defeating in Ireland. We're telling women that this should be an option, yet there's there's not availability for our younger folks to receive the education and, and the training. And uh, from my um, analysis, a lot of the, the staff, uh, including midwives, nurses, etc. I mean, to be honest, it is more work, you know, to, to, to provide options uh, such as water birth i mean it's great i mean I, I totally i'm on board i think everyone should have a home birth with a water birth but um my que so twofold questions how are we going to actually educate the newer uh, folks and high and big shout out to the students here if no one's got the experience now and then was your sample i'm sorry i missed it at the beginning was it folks that had births within the hospital setting or was there a was there a mixture and would it be the same midwives or is there a mixture there? I'm not familiar, I've worked in a lot of places, but not Ireland. Is there mostly the same health service midwives or would there be private and, and public midwives that were offering these options? Thank you and, and really great, good work and uh, very impressed, congratulations. Thank you so much, Jane, for your questions. So I'm gonna um, start with the easiest one so the sample is um so these were women that gave birth in the pool in a hospital setting yes as i said unfortunately in ireland in dublin specifically we don't have midwifery led units and we wanted to look at how it is to uh, provide care for low risk women in a medicalized setting so in a hospital setting so these were women that were uh, low risk uh, they, they met all the criteria, the inclusion criteria to, you know, assess actually even during the labor. Uh, and they uh, attended the hospital. They Some of them attended the Domino Clinic, which is the community midwife service in the hospital. Um, and they came to the hospital at the time, obviously, of the labor, and they were able to use the pool in the delivery suite. So this pool is placed actually is placed in, into the delivery suite. Um, 
the, the midwives were midwives. There was no private midwives, but just the midwives that were on duty that day. So the facilitating water births can also, as you said, depend from uh, who is the mid, like if there is enough experienced midwife to provide care to women in labor in the, wa in the water. Uh, and I connect with the second question, which is yes, the one about the education, because as you, can said, as you said, it's very important to educate women, uh, midwives in promoting and to and actually look after women in labor in the water. Um, midwives in Ireland are very well educated regarding and very um, skilled on, especially on emergencies and on high risk settings, but because there's very little regarding low risk and especially birthing pools, they might feel not confident on that. Now, there is a lot of study days that are um, going on since the poll started in the comb. There is a lot of, we are including all the students, for example, in the comb hospital in our master class on water birds. And I am a clinical skill facilitator myself working in the labor world. So if I have new staff, I will work with them um, and provide them education while looking after women in the in the in the water. But as you as you said, it should be like much more included, even in the university and even in the program on the university for for the uh, student midwives, um, just to to be to make them to make everybody confident and comfortable in providing this care option to women. I don't know if I answer. That sounded good to me, so hopefully Jane's happy. Um, and if you just said, why did you have seven in your sample? That's just been answered as well. Yeah, sorry. Uh, it was actually nine in my sample. I had nine because I started, so um, women were recruited by the gatekeeper. This gatekeeper is actually the research midwife that I was talking about before the PETA study, uh, a quantitative study before this study. Uh, before my qualitative and she sent them uh, she sent all the uh, women that gave birth between um the 12 12 months prior my study a letter so the wo the woman voluntarily uh, replied me back to decide whether or not to attend the study so none of them decided to attend the study to voluntarily sampling like they decided to 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 participate in the study uh, but then unfortunately COVID hit so at the time uh, I had nine women and I could have also sent more information leaflet and more letter recruit letter to other women uh, but because of the COVID and uh, we couldn't do any one-to-one -one interviews because obviously the restrictions and because the data were actually enough uh, to explain women ex uh, women experiences uh, I decided just with my supervisor at the time that the sample was um, was a good sample. Also in qualitative study, the sample doesn't have to be representative because we're talking about experiences and a nine women sample was considered enough for the purpose of the query. And especially at that stage of COVID, we had no idea what was hitting us. So a lot of kind of restrictions stopped a lot of things and also the workforce demand suddenly hit through the reef as well. So Dana's just saying, as we're kind of wrapping up this session, so Diana said that she's Irish working in France and the changes have been amazing since she left 20 years ago. The big change is the voice of the women in the last 25 years. Um, and Rhonda's agreeing it's progress, but we still need more. We'll always need more. Um, and the women's voice, absolutely. I think that's an international thing that as the women's voice grows louder, more things are going to change um, within.